I'm going to go ahead and hit record. I just pushed it. Yeah, we're ready. Okay, wonderful. Um, welcome everyone to our 2023 webinar series. My name is Kathy Corbett representing the Biad management team. We are honored with a special presentation today by Beth McDonald, who will discuss it's more fun to be prepared with a buddy. Before we get started, I have a few reminders. This webinar will be a re recorded session and we will continue to share important information with the community. I will, we will post the webinar on our website and on our YouTube page. Please feel free to share that with your network. I would like to introduce our speaker today, Beth McDonald. Beth is a vulnerable, is the Vulnerable Populations Coordinator for the Delaware Office of Preparedness. She assists with people of Delaware's preparation and response activity for persons with access and functional needs. Beth's own personal story led her to her passion for helping families, all families, be prepared for anything that life throws at them. Please welcome Beth McDonald. Good afternoon, thank you for having me. And in preparing, things always um, don't go the way that we plan them to go. So in this live um, event, you will not have the slides, but the slides will be uploaded later. We had a glitch with that. So I'm going to go through uh, my presentation as I had it prepared with the cover sheet, which stated my name and my job description. And if you needed to reach me, it has my email, beth.macdonald at delaware.gov. So on the first slide, I talked about the web, webinar itself and your personal emergency plan and how to complete your um, using your buddy tools. Those are the things that we'll talk about here today. When we initially set this up, we only had one buddy tool. Now we have two. And the second one is a travel buddy. And I hope that a lot of you will find that helpful. We had uh, some of the partners that might be on this uh, listening to this webinar um, helped us in tweaking that and keeping it brief, but to the point and usable for folks. So the next slide, talk, what did you know? Did you know that planning for emergencies can be scary for almost everybody? And it doesn't matter where you are, who you are. It's scary. It's like getting your life insurance policy because it's something that you know, oh, that's gonna happen eventually, but maybe if I don't prepare for it, I can keep it at bay. Well, that doesn't work. <laughs> and we found out over the last few years when we had totally unexpected um, event that was long lasting with COVID. And then we had event events inside of COVID, weather emergencies and other things. And many of you may have had personal emergencies. So that was just one of those things that you really thought, how could I prepare for this at all? And during it, we had a lot of learning experiences um, that we've taken away from that as we look forward uh, to our other uh, preparedness work. So you can use your emergency plan when it's not an emergency. COVID was a public health emergency, but it wasn't what we usually think of as an emergency. We think of that as a weather emergency, a the power's out, a health emergency, you're traveling and it's uh, some kind, you fell and you broke your leg, you know, something like that. But you never know what an emergency can be. I, you have heard, um, in this series, you've heard from Sussex County Emergency Operations Center um, and Joe Thomas talked to you about SMART 911 and how to use that. So if you weren't able to listen to that webinar, I encourage you to go back and listen to that. And that's a tool that can be used with Preparedness Buddy. Also, Pat Heineman uh, spoke to you from the University of Delaware, but I think she may have been speaking as her Citizens Corps role in preparing. And so she gave you a lot of um, tools there for building your kit and different things. So those are 
some things that you want to combine with your preparedness buddy. And we will be talking about that. Um, my slide's lovely. So those of you <laughs> joining later, you will see the pictures of the preparedness buddy and the travel buddy. The next slide we talked about, um, did, it says, did you know? You might already be prepared. And just as I stated in the last three years, you found out ways that you were prepared and you weren't prepared. And it, it heightened your awareness that, you know, I need to do that better. And toilet paper was the number one thing for a really long time, or number two thing. You already uh, plan for every day and you can, um, you can think about that like just daily activities. If you have a family and your children get up in the morning, you have a plan every day. You know, every day, this is, you either took your bath before you went to bed or you do it in the morning and the clothes are out, we pack the lunch and we get to the bus and then I go off to work. And, you know, it's just a general plan. It's not a plan for all of your health needs or anything. It's just your general plan. So those of us that have daily things that are wrapped around our health or our access to services. We also have those plans already in place. So I, while we're, before we get to the preparedness buddy, I want you to think a little bit about your day and how your day looks different than your neighbor's day because you need to plan for transportation or you need to plan for someone to assist you with medication or a doctor's appointment, you know, and every day can change a little bit, but you have those plans. So it's really not going to be that difficult to fill out a preparedness buddy. And, you know, you can write your plan in your buddy tool. So you'll take part of those things that Pat Heineman talked to you about. You probably jotted down a few notes there and fill those in on your preparedness buddy. I'll take a moment to uh, say that if you receive services through DSAP, oh, thank you for holding that up, Cheryl. Yeah. <laughs> That's the preparedness for uh, If you receive services through DSAP, your uh, case manager should be bringing a preparedness buddy to you to fill out every year. So you may already be familiar with this tool. Mm -hmm. And it looks like there's a lot on there. We, I think uh, we'll be able to go to the link when I get to that. I'll give Cheryl the link and we can uh, take a look at it, but I'm not ready for that just yet. <laughs> so um, it's called Preparedness Buddy because it's not just you by yourself. It's you and a friend, a neighbor, a relative, anyone that you trust with your information a support person for you. Your preparedness buddy could be a support staff person who works for you, but that person may not always be working with you or they may not be at your home at the time of an emergency. So you wanna have an additional person available as a buddy. And I would suggest a neighbor or a relative who's close by, or at least someone who could send someone who's close by, maybe, your buddy's someone who's at work, but they have the neighbor's phone number and the, they'll send the neighbor over. So it's something you can do together. And if it's a challenge for you filling out these things, then that, that makes it easier when you're working with it with your friend or neighbor. And it, it makes it easier for me because it makes it less frightening because you, you have a conversation about what's going on and what I might need. and. Uh, do I really need to bring this communication device or can I bring a different one? You know, something like that. So it's, it's a good opportunity for uh, you and your buddy to talk about some things that maybe you really don't talk about all the time if they don't provide supports for you on a daily basis. So on slide, whoa, no. <laughs> Did you hear the fear in my voice on slide? Number five, I lost it for a minute on the slide. Um, and let's look at the preparedness buddy. So if, Cheryl, can I get you to share your screen and go to preparede.org, 
can you go online for me? Sure. So we want to go to preparede.org. And if you're looking for the buddy, you can just Google it, Preparedness yeah. Buddy Delaware, and it'll come up. But I, I'm sorry, pre take pre the site anyway. Prepare. Mm -hmm. D-E mm -hmm. dot org. Gotcha. Can everybody okay. see that? And yes. So this is um, this is a tool from DEMA, and I don't know if Pat shared this with you or not. It, it's a wonderful place with lots of information. If you go to make a plan, I believe that's where we'll find this stuff. And scroll down, please. Whoop, let's see. Uh, whoop, 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 whoop. Mm -hmm. Seniors and special needs. Let's try that. Mm -hmm. And you notice I said, let's try that. Okay, keep going. Okay, go down. Now, th there's wonderful things on here, but that is not my presentation. So I'm going to let you do that later. Um, Let's go back up and out. You want to do the basic, basic emergency plan? Yes. Basic. Yes. So yeah, this is nice to register for Smart Nine One One. That's nice. We already did seniors and those with special needs. Mm -hmm. Make they changed plan. the setup on this, and I'm sorry. So this is real life and the recording. You'll see how this is even confusing to me. So let's try again. Did we click seniors and special needs before? Mm hmm And okay, so let's slowly. University of Delaware, personal support. Okay, we will go back. Well, is there a search button in the... Um, there's a, yep. Yeah, what do you want to search? Well, let's go build it. Uh, let, build, let's a kit. Back, build a kit. Yeah. Build a kit. In there. To me, it's not where it needs to be. So here's build a kit. Go bag, travel kit. So scroll down all the way to see what these other things are. No. Okay. So now we got to go back to the other one. I am sorry. That's okay. Make this is the real world. <laughs> Uh, make a now plan. Scroll all the way down, make a plan, and let's see if it's underneath that. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so search preparedness buddy. And we could have done that to begin with, but I did want you to see this site. Taking you back to make a plan. And where did you go? Additional plans. Try that one. Try it with the last one. Additional point. plans. Yeah. Yep, that's where it is. See, it's not intuitive. So, yeah. so what you need to remember is this is the last place you're going to look. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking for access prepared and buddy so, for sure? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That's it, right? So this is the brochure. And if you will, um, let me go back to my notes here so that I follow along when you upload the other. Um... Okay, so go ahead and click on the English one and the whole brochure will come up. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we have two sides to the brochure, but let's just take a look here. Um, you're going to first find your preparedness buddy. And this is something that you just write in. You know, it, it doesn't have to be on your computer. If you would like to scan it and keep it on your phone or someplace where you can access it again, that's fine. But this is a fluid document um, and you just jot it down. Nobody else needs to have it, but you and your buddy, you just need to have your name on the front of it. So, finding your preparedness buddy. And um, they also suggest that you have an out of state contact. And that would be if there was something, you know, where all communication was down in Delaware. And I believe that that's probably something that Pat shared also with you. So if we can go to the next, 
the back. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So you have a list where you can put your medications and the dosage. And that's important to have, but you can share as much as you want. This is your document. You don't have to say, put down every little thing that you're taking if you choose not to. This is your plan. It's not your doctor's plan. It's your plan. So it's up to you what you put in here. But it oh, is Beth, I think, I think Dee has a question. Oh, yes, Dee. Um, are there plans sooner rather than later, later to make it an accessible fillable form online? We do not have that currently. If that is something that the state council would like to work with us on. <laughs> well, it's required by law and we invite you to come to our electronic accessibility standards committee meeting where currently the entire state of Delaware's websites are being assessed for accessibility. <laughs> Okay, so that is something that our public information officer would already be aware of, and I will reach back to him okay. and, and certainly look at this. When this was first developed, um, yeah, that wasn't really something that we did. You know, we, we were thrilled to just have it out in paper form, but yeah, and to, to Dee's point, Beth, I think it would be kind of nice to have it as a fillable form. Sure. Not that everybody would. Some people are going to like that manual form, but but I almost everything we're doing is is really now a fillable form. Um, and it it's it's funny. I just want to interject one thing. Even just for myself and my husband, um, we were traveling, and I have no idea what medications he takes and in what amounts and what whatever. So I actually just said to him last week, I need to write all this down. Just in case there is an emergency. So now I'm going to put it in my body. <laughs> you have it there or you have it in your smart 911 document. Yes, and, and for people with disabilities, it's easier for them to complete if it's an accessible, fillable form. That's, okay. Right. okay. Yeah, so we'll work on that, um, D. Definitely work on getting that this done like that. And then, right. And uh, if you would just send me an email, D, and remind me to reach out, that would be great. I can do that. And I'll reach to Sean and have him also work on the travel buddy. Okay. So uh, your durable medical equipment and supplies that you need, there's a, a spot here for that. Uh, in some of my later slides, I show a few things. So, you know, that's not... You're just your wheelchair. I mean, you're for your medical equipment. If you have a nebulizer, you may have a portable nebulizer, also a battery operated one that you can take with you for travel. If you have CPAP, you need to have all of that. You need to think about the things that you will need if you have to leave for more than 24 hours. And you may have something with you that you carry with you that's battery operated, but you have a, a better device. So you want to list that. And well, also those it, things need to be replaced. You already have them on a list. And wouldn't it even just be considered like glasses? Like, sure. You know, sure. Like if, if you really can't see Absolutely. that well, glasses Absolutely. would be durable medical equipment, right? <laughs> right. Glasses, hearing aids, um, anything like that, that you need to get through the day. And then your allergies to drugs and food. Then on the next uh, row, we have medical disability service providers. So, and that's up to you if you want to, if you choose to make this document something that's very detailed, then you can fill in your physicians. This is not like a mandatory thing. Again, it's your document. And if you have a service animal or a pet, there's the little notes there and you can always add other things. Then they also have a section of what important papers you should have. And I believe you probably covered that a little bit in some of your previous sessions. And you could refer back to those documents um, if you already filled that out. And do you have any specific transportation requirements? So that may apply to a few folks. And, and I have a friend who currently is having a, a vision issue and she can't drive. And so she's like, well, now I can't go there and do this. I have to wait for my friend to take me or I have to figure out how to get to the bus. And so it's a challenge and it may not always be a permanent uh, issue. It could be a temporary issue. And your essential items, it's just a checklist there. But again, um, Pat, I believe gave you tools for that. 
but this is just another um, tool. So let me see what my next slide will be so that when you pull the PDF up. So slide six says, what do I need? And it's talked about the things we just talked about. Think about your day. Again, we're going back to that where do you take medicine first thing in the morning? That's a good way to go through this. What do I do? You know, this is medicine I take in the morning and the evening. You need special meals, your transportation, mobility device. Um, if you use crutches in your house or a cane, but when you're out and about and you have to walk a long distance or stand for a while and you need a scooter or a walker or a rollator, then you want to put that on there and uh, think about bringing that. And yes, on this slide, I have glasses, hearing aid, and CPAP. <laughs> But that's why I had the slides, but unfortunately we're not looking at them. So um, we're, I'm not quite ready for the travel buddy, but slide seven has your plan may include your medicines and there were photographs of medicines and your special foods. And the other thing your plan may include on slide eight is communication devices. So some people um, may communicate differently and so you wanna make sure that you have those tools with you. And if you have a tool that requires batteries all the time, then you might think about bringing something that you could use as a backup. Your personal assistance, uh, you wanna include that also. If you have an attendant uh, that supports you or a family member that supports you for some caregiving, um, during the day, you don't have to be specific about the caregiving, but you would want to list that, you know. And then mobility, we talked about um, if you were unable to drive. So I wanna take a moment and just talk about paratransit during weather emergencies. And in Delaware, mm -hmm. usually our weather emergencies get a heads up unless it's a tornado. So we know that in advance, you may need to evacuate. If you're in an area that always, always floods in Sussex County or on the coastline, then you need to get in touch with paratransit and get out of Dodge ahead of time to a neighbor's house because once the flooding starts, paratransit isn't going anyplace because it's not safe for anyone mm -hmm. and you'll be stuck there. So. You don't want to have that be your learning experience. You really would, you know, think about it as just getting a chance to visit with those other people that you really love so much and <laughs> plan to get out of town early. <laughs> and I know oftentimes we think, well, they said that was going to happen before and it never flooded here, but it's better safe than sorry. I, unfortunately, I have, um, heard from families when they didn't leave and they should have, and it was not a good experience and very detrimental to health of uh, persons in the family. So page nine on the slide nine, we have Travel Buddy. So Travel Buddy was on that page that you had open, Cheryl. And you should, yes, thank you. Travel Buddy is our brand new tool, which will be made electronically. Thank you, Dee. <laughs> I, I, the, the power of the council behind it always helps. It's wonderful because, you know, it's me asking and you asking. Those are just sometimes it's better. Um, so Travel Buddy was designed just to give you tips and on your daily travel, attending events, visiting with family and friends, and vacations, uh, business meetings also, which sometimes are, can be vacations. So we have it set out in sections and some of it is repetitive because you need the same things when you go places, but let's just uh, take a moment and look at making your vacation and hotel reservations. And when you call for your reservation or you go online for it, sometimes you'll have to then separately call or chat with someone and tell them about your needs. So if you need an accessible room, and an accessible room doesn't mean that you have a wheelchair. You know, you could be visually impaired, you could be hearing impaired, you could 
just have limited mobility or you may be extremely short and need some um, supports that way. So describe to them uh, you know, what you need in your accessible room. Personally, when we travel, um, we ask for an accessible room, but my daughter doesn't need an accessible shower. So I always ask them not to give us that room because I'd rather save it for someone who can use it. So that's up to you. And sometimes there's only one room left and that would be it. But I, I kind of try to be respectful, especially if you're at a conference event. At, is there extra space in the room for your wheelchair or your scooter? Uh, do you need an extra bed for support staff? They'll often bring in a cot. They might charge you a little bit more, like $15. I'm not sure about the ADA piece on that. Do you need a, a large bathroom, a larger bathroom so you can maneuver around uh, a low entry shower or seat, a room close to the elevator? Most accessible rooms are close to the elevator. However, if you just ask for specific needs in your room, and it's not an accessible room, it might be far from the elevator. <laughs> so you want to keep that in mind. Accessible parking, uh, is there drop off and valet parking? And smoke alarm for hearing impaired. So that's something that you would want to request in advance. When you do check in, tell the person at the desk, this is on our next um, section of the flyer, that you, if, if this is true, that you need assistance in a fire to evacuate. Most hotels keep a list, but it's only um, the supervisor has that list at the desk. So it's not something that gets shared with the whole, whole hotel staff, but so they know where they have people that need supports if there's a fire. And talk about your evacuation plan and they're happy to talk to you about it. And if you don't want to discuss that in front of people that are waiting behind you, you can certainly ask to you know, step aside to uh, keep your privacy. Medical equipment, um, ask for assistance. If you need to move furniture, we're often moving furniture and make sure that the outlet that you plug that medical device into cannot be turned off by a switch at the door because that could not work out too well. And make sure your refrigerator works. A lot of times those may not work. And when you check in for your accessible room, make sure the room is right for you that uh, you know meets your needs. And don't don't be afraid to ask them to, to change you. I my personal experience, we come to the room, the person bringing our luggage, we ask them to wait outside for a moment till we check out the room so that they're not unloading stuff and then we have to load it up and go back down. Can, uh, can you use your wheelchair, walker, scooter in the room and make sure the bathroom meets your specific needs? So those of you who like to camp and if it's in an RV, a tent or a cabin, the, following the same things at check-in, tell them if you'll need assistance evacuating and you'll want to make sure that you have an emergency phone number, that's good, not just simply 911. And give them your name, your phone number, and your lot location. Plan for dangerous weather. I had uh, family friends who their motorhome was in an area that flooded overnight with no warning that her husband woke up, opened the door, and the water was up to his waist. They lost their motor home and many other people, you know, lost things, but they were lucky that someone woke up and people were able to get out. Uh, fire and ice and snow. Using your scooters and wheelchairs at night. And, you know, you might think you're not going to be out at night, but you probably will be. So, you know, just get a little strobe thing or a little flashlight even just use the strobe on your phone so that people can see you and uh, see your wheelchair. We have little battery operated things that we put on the back of Lizzie's wheelchair for at events in the evening. And if you have one or have access to one, there are small portable threshold ramps and, and camping situations, sometimes that might be helpful. 
because not all the thresholds are even. Pack your phone, your emergency contact information, mobility device, backup batteries, medications, waterproof pouch for medications. And I would suggest your preparedness buddy <laughs> should be part of that. And can we go back up to the uh, top one, please, Cheryl? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So when you're attending events and in Dover, you know, you may be attending a race, you might be going to a football game, you might be going to just baseball games with the kids, um, NASCAR, the fair. So there's lots of things that are that we attend and wine festivals. A lot of people like to go to those. So, and beer festivals, which are out in rugged terrain. So think about what you'll need and how long are you going to be there? Did you remember to bring that medicine that you usually take at such and such a time and then you got tied up and you didn't get home to uh, take it? Um, and always have that little list of your emergency conditions and the things that you would need. So that's pretty generalized thing, you know, just disinfectant, water, a snack, maybe prepare for the weather. You never know what's going to happen. Never. It could be a sunny day when you leave and you could be stuck in the mud on your way out. So um, let's go to the next page, which would be, this will be the back page on that folder. Be prepared and safe when visiting family and friends. Uh, it's above, Cheryl. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Got it right here. When it's folded, yeah. that happens. To yeah, okay. Person. This will be on the back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to go to a friend's home, and especially if you're new to using a mobility device or a support device and you your pride sometimes gets in the way and you think I can make it through without taking that with me. Think about your experience and think about, you know, bringing your personal care items, your, make sure your hearing aids working and your glad you have your glasses, your special food. Um, I, I often think about when we would have events at our home when kids were graduating and my aunts and uncles came and their mobility challenges changed from the last event that we had and maybe they had a difficult time getting in the house and at home they would bring a cane but they didn't want to bring the cane in because they wanted to be that strong person so think about your enjoyment of it you know bring your cane your manual wheelchair if you like a scooter or a walker you know don't worry about it if you don't use it put it in the corner and if you're there too long and you get tired you've got that to fall back on and you can stay and enjoy your day so what is there anything else that anybody'd like to chime in on this travel buddy well, I, I think it's really important because we really don't think about it in general. We just go about our day. So I think what what I was really struck with, Beth, um, in in the first part of this, your your conversation, as well as the other speakers we've had throughout this series, is you just have to think of these things anyway. But when you add a crisis situation on top, that's when your mind goes blank, right? You just panic. The mm -hmm. adrenaline kicks in. So if you can prepare, you can avoid panic in those times that you're not thinking clearly. So I think it's important that you, you really think this through when you're calm, because when you're not so calm, then it's already done. The thing that stuck out to me as well is doing the same thing for your animal. And it never even occurred to me like to have a go bag for my dog. Like I, I get it. I need a go bag for me. I need to go back for my husband. But I wasn't thinking about our animal. So, you know, we're all set. And then my, you know, my animal has nothing it needs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I love the go bag idea as well. And Alan, are you familiar with the go bags? Have you heard that before? Have you heard about a go bag? No, I haven't. So Beth, that would be something I would maybe explain for like, I know, and Dee okay. of course knows, but Kathy may not, and Alan may not like a go bag. So a go bag, it's, 
something that you can carry. You're going to take this out of your home. So it's not like your big container that you leave in your house. And it would have just very simple things in it, like water, uh, maybe an extra pair of socks, um, a t-shirt, uh, something to keep you dry, hand sanitizers. It, you don't want to make it too heavy, a snack. Medication. The medications, your, um, any, your preparedness buddy. <laughs> yeah. So like and your all preparedness buddy will help you pack for that. So I think that, um, again, Pat Heinemann's uh, session did go over that and she did a very thorough job with it, talking about all the things that you would put in there. Uh, they, and I, did she actually, she went through a go bag, I believe. Yeah. And, and we actually had some. So do you probably still have some left, don't you? Yeah, I believe I do. Of yeah. the go bags. But in, in Alan's case, if you give us your address, we could probably mail you one. Alan, where do you live, Alan? Oh, you're muted. Wilmington. Where do you live, Wilmington? Yeah, like I agree. Right. So, I mean, it might be a situation we could just pop one in the mail because it really kind of goes through all of the things you need to think about and it puts it in one place so that truly if, if a really quick emergency happened, um, a fire or, you know, a hurricane or, or tornado that came quickly, you grab it and go. And that's what it's designed to be is it's that you're ready for any emergency that happens. The other thing that, that we covered, Alan, was the smart 911. Are you familiar with smart, smart 911? No. So smart 911 is, and Beth, I will let you describe it. Okay, well, <laughs> that's your deal. Well, we just, we helped uh, the 911 centers get that message out. Mm -hmm. Smart 911 is an electronic enrollment um, system where you can put in your specific needs. If you have, um, if you're visually impaired, you could just put in that. If you have a heart condition, you could put in that. And you, you sign up online, it, your information that you put in, again, nobody else is putting it in for you, so you divulge as much or as little as you choose, comes up when you call 911. And the um, dispatch has access to that information. So they would know, for instance, if you yeah, that probably should be on there someplace. <laughs> yeah, so I, I brought it up, Beth. So okay. part of your um, preparede.org, if you go on that website yeah. that we went on, you can actually even register for SMART 911 right yeah. on here. So what it allows is it allows you to let your, your first responders know anything that you need them to know. So if you had somebody that had a special need or you know, somebody had mobility issues or was in a wheelchair and couldn't leave. So it, it just, it, it front loads all the information for your household um, so that you don't have to, again, convey this in an emergency. Does that make sense? Yeah, so. And so okay. two of the things with that is nobody has access to that unless you are on the phone calling 911. And additionally, if you text 911, <laughs> that we're not clear that that comes up. I think that was still something Joe was uh, investigating. Right. So if you, text if doesn't you, uh, trigger it. Right. And they have it in all counties. So Newcastle, yes. Kent, Sussex, and it's all attached to the first responders, fire and police, um, paramedics. So to me, it's that extra layer of protection like let's front load as much as we can when we're calm so that when we are not so calm, we have at least as much covered as we can. And, and, so and, and you can also, it depends on if you're old school like myself and you actually still have a landline, you register with your landline for your house. You can even let them know, okay, does a person with a disability, are they in a certain bedroom so they know to go to them because they're going to need extra help. If you have a cell phone, you can register with a cell phone so that whenever you travel anywhere throughout the United States that that community has smart 911, if you dial, then your personal medical information that you have provided is going to come up to save time for the first responders and help them to better care for you and your family in an emergency. 
Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I love that travel component of it. Yeah. Awesome. So thanks, Dee, for putting up the link there. We'll also share it um, when we share materials, Alan. After this, you'll get the PowerPoint, you'll get all of these materials and links to everything. Um, and then we're always here to answer questions. Awesome. Thank so, you. Thank you. Did you have any questions, Alan? No, that's just a lot of learning. So this is great. Thank you. So uh, I'm just going to flip through my last few slides because they will be up there. And it was just a review that we're, you need to find a preparedness buddy, complete the um, form with that buddy, and keep the original plan in your disaster kit. You can keep one on your refrigerator because that's where emergency responders look for that type of information. Most people's refrigerator isn't going anywhere and it's usually in the kitchen so they can find it. <laughs> that was what they decided was a good place. Um, and then you, uh, your preparedness buddy should regularly check with you to see if there are any updates. If you've changed medications, you might just wanna give them a call and say, oh, you know, we need to change that on there and review and update your emergency plans yearly or during peak disaster season. So for instance, we're coming closely to the end of hurricane season. I hope we make it. <laughs> and then we'll be going into winter storms and sometimes those two intersect. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, try, try to, and, and again, with your kit, you look at that too for each new season. And I had the links to the buddy brochures. Um, keep a copy in your emergency kit, refrigerator, in your backpack or purse, or in your glove compartment, in your vehicle is a good place. And you can print copies of these online at those locations um, that we had at preparede.org. But uh, Cheryl, you'll put the link in the, um, in the chat. Are there any questions? Um, there's just one thing I wanted to add. I think the unique part of preparing with a buddy keep, can keep it fun. So if you designate a preparedness buddy, I think you're gonna keep each other accountable. So I think that's kind of the, the trick is if you do it yourself, it seems more like work, but if you kind of commit to one person that we're going to keep this updated at least, you know, every year, I think every six months wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to look, but then, you know, definitely any major updates. The other thing is, um, and this is something that Pat shared, you know, in our first session is, is designate someone that's out of state. So if you have a large family, a family of five, mom, dad, three kids, and, and, and a emergency happens and you're not all together, it's the one place that you're going to call or check in that's outside of hopefully the disaster area so that everybody checks in with Aunt Marcia and we know we're all safe if we all aren't together. Does that make sense? It's yeah. that it's that one person that it's almost like, you know, it's if where we all played tag, right? It was it was home, <laughs> like the safe spot at home. So if, if everybody has the same place to check in, then you will know everybody's safe. Yes, Dee. Another addition to that kit is to write down like that person's phone number and other emergency numbers you may need because people nowadays are so used to their cell phones. And if your cell phone should happen to die or if it's an emergency like when they had the earthquake in Virginia, but it affected Delaware, all the 911 lines were overwhelmed. So they disabled cellular calling. Mm -hmm. So anybody with a cell phone wasn't able to call anyway because it was a state of emergency. So if you can get to somewhere that's a landline, at least you'd have those numbers written down instead of in a phone that you can't even open up to get the number from. That, that is so important because I, I don't even know phone numbers like I used to, right? We used to all know our home number. We know our parents' number, our kids' numbers. Now with cell phones, I don't know anyone's number because it's all on my phone. If my phone's not working, I don't I don't have any way to contact every anybody. I believe the preparedness buddy, doesn't it have that on there? I think so. Um, yeah, I do. I do think it does. You have their phone number. 
and they yep. have yours. Yes. Yep. So, so I just want to uh, just quickly remind you that this is not just for people with disabilities or access and functional needs. It can be used for children who are at home alone a little bit after school until someone gets home from work. And it's a good tool for a neighbor to have or a relative to have so that if there's a fire in the area or a lockdown in their area, you know, they they know someone else has their information and can be checking on them. So yeah, absolutely, all great information, Beth. Thank you so much. Thank you, and I really apologize for technology in my life. <laughs> okay, we look, we we worked it out. Um, Alan, did you have any other questions? I know this is a lot of information to take in, and we're here to answer any questions anytime, but was there anything that? No, I, th I think I'm keeping some notes. Uh, I'll get back to you and I can ask you guys if I have any questions or the yeah. medical state, but I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and as, as we said, we'll, um, if you connect with our admin email, just give us your address. We'll send you a go bag and um, some of these preparedness buddy. Okay, great. For sure. Thanks. Awesome, thanks, thanks again. You're welcome. Um, Kathy, I guess we're going to throw it to you to wrap us up. Yeah, I just want to thank Beth for your presentation. Um, and again, we will have that on our website, on our YouTube channel, and um, we'll be sure to mail email Beth's presentation when we get those pages, as well as all these links. And thank you all very much. We appreciate you. Thank you for having awesome. me. Awesome. That's good. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Nice to meet everybody. Uh-huh.